let's talk about the parts that I used for this. Brandon Dollar from Low Dollar Motorsports saw one of my videos. He reached out and said he wanted to work with me on something, and so I asked, and he, he sent me two sensors for this project, one of which was a two-bar map sensor, and one was a 0 to 50 PSI transducer. In addition, I used the sensor block from Motion Raceworks. Also, I used some of those Push Connect hose and fittings, both with eighth inch NPT and quarter inch NPT. So I plumbed the sensor block with two bar map sensor into the valve cover. Uh, the valley cover is best, however, anywhere that ha would see crank case pressure or vacuum will work. With the valve cover drilled and tapped, the sensor mounted into the sensor block and all the fittings installed, it was time to mount it to the firewall before moving on to the coolant pressure sensor. In my upper radiator hose, I have this aluminum adapter from Jags that run that has two eighth inch NPT ports drilled into it, one of which I have a barb fitting in for my steam port. The other just had a plug, so it seemed like a good place to install this sensor. There's some discussion on where is the best place for it. Some guys say in the cylinder head. Some guys will say in the radiator. There's pros and cons to each. With the two sensors mounted, it was time to start the wiring. I bought this 10-foot roll of split loom and ran four wires from the Pro Dash up to the two sensors. One 5-volt reference, one sensor ground, which I split in the engine compartment to go to each of the two sensors, and one input for each of the two sensors. With that out of the way, all that was left was just to crimp the three wires for each sensor and then plug in the connectors. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the EFI portion of this. So I used inputs one and input two for no reason other than it said I can use custom five volt input on both of these and it didn't tie up anything else like a switch to ground input or anything else. They basically, those two just do custom five volt input. So now that it's time to get to this, open up your instruction manual to page 13. If you don't have it, dig it out of the crash download it like i did and flip to page 13 find your inputs that you're going to use in my instance inputs one and inputs two then flip to page number eight right page eight and then we're going to look at this little deal of the plug here and we see that input one is down here on pin 18 and input two is down here on pin 27. also because these are three pin connectors three pin connector if we go down to the bottom here we can see our five volt power for the sensor is pin 17 and our sensor ground is pin 26. our ground which is different than a chassis ground don't that up sensor ground so we need to look up and find pin oh look at that it's right next to input two and our five volt which is up here pin 17. additionally if you're doing this on terminator x you can use the power tap which will also give you those two and then you just run your inputs into the, the, the harness, however you, you're doing that. So that's that. If you need help on wiring this up, I've got a video for it. It's actually probably one of the first videos I made. Okay, now that we're done, we're in the car. We're going to go over here to customize. And we're going to make sure we bring our pressure sensor sheet that, that the good man Brandon Dollar includes every dang sensor. And if you lose it, he has it on the website. But you need this need it right so we're gonna come down here now we're gonna customize all right we're going into dash configuration we're gonna go input one we're gonna name that right we're gonna name it crankcase psi or pressure now we're done we're gonna change the type to custom five volt see that notice that's the only thing that pops up in there and then we're gonna click on the little gear now looking at this my crankcase pressure is actually a two bar map sensor so first thing we're gonna change voltage the starting one which is zero Point 0.5 volts. We're gonna come down here, change the five to the four and a half. We're gonna change the value. Mr. Brandon tells us that this is a 14 and a half PSI at four and a half volts. And because it's two bar map sensor, 
half volt is going to be negative 14 and a half volts. Now our graph gets all crazy, so we're gonna go and hit linearize X and linearize Y. Now it brings up very nice, pretty slope, and we're gonna hit save. We're gonna do the same thing for input two. We're gonna name it coolant PSI. Hit okay, same thing, change the type, custom five volt, hit a little gear, and we're changing values. Look up 50 PSI sensor, we're gonna see that half volt is zero pounds, and four and a half pound, four and a half volts is 50 pounds. Okay, we've got all that entered, 0.5, four and a half, zero, 50. We linear, linearize the X and Y axes again, and hit save. Now that we're done, we hit okay, we hit okay, and now it's time to put something on our dash. So we bring up the race screen. Notice, I don't have bald eagles and freedom on this one. I have a street driving screen, and I have a race screen. Street driving one was just a little too distracting. Now we customize. Add gauge. We scroll down till we find or go right past our crankcase. We're going to do the same thing for coolant pressure. We want it digital and it's going to go right here. Customize it. We're going to put a warning on the high warning only and we want it quick flat flash quickly. We also want to change the size to 100. And then we're going to move it because we don't want it necessarily overlapping with our coolant. We're going to do the same thing for the coolant pressure as well. We are going to change it. We're going to add a unit. So we hit PSI. Okay, so we got both of those added. Now we're going to go ahead and save our back, save our layout. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to save our layout, or we've saved our lay layout, and here's what we're looking at. We're looking at less than a, or I'm sorry, less than two pounds of vacuum in the crankcase and no pressure in the coolant system. So again, real quick, why don't you want to use knock sensors since that's their function? So a knock sensor actually doesn't detect detonation, it's listening for a frequency that on a factory assembled 100% stock engine does correspond with detonation, but as soon as you modify it, all bets are off that that detonation or unstable combustion is happening at that exact frequency, which is what the knock sensors and the computer are listening for. So why the coolant pressure and why the crankcase pressure? If you get into unstable combustion and you lift the cylinder head, you will pressurize the coolant system from the combustion gases. If you flutter the rings from unstable combustion or detonation, whatever, right? From unstable combustion, if you flutter the rings or unseat them, you will pressurize the crankcase. So they often happen before the actual detonation, right? Shatters pistons and crunches rods. So that's the reason for those two sensors versus the knock sensor. So anyways, we wrapped up the coolant pressure and the crankcase pressure sensors. This will give us a more accurate idea of what's happening in the engine. And you can use them either for protection with, uh, you know, if you have a dominator, just plug them straight in. If you got Terminator or HP, use that new fancy CAN IO block, or you can use it just like I am, straight into the Pro Dash to monitor in the data logs. Or if you upgrade the software, you can have it, uh, the Terminator, see all of those inputs. If the Terminator can see it, it can make changes to it, either by pulling spark out as soon as you start getting into unstable combustion, or just to monitor it like I am. Uh, either way you go, if you are okay at tuning, you can build a pretty decent strategy to keep yourself safe, versus using knock sensors that pull timing after you put rods outside of the block. drinking piss tonight because I'm all out of the apple crown. So again, shout out to Brandon Dollar over at Low Dollar. Great guy to work with. I don't have any sensors on my car that are not either genuine GM, AC Delco, or Low Dollar Motorsports. So it's a great guy to work with. Got a pretty good store and uh, real fast shipping.